So you want to become better in F1 23? Well, you're in the right place. I have over seven years of sim racing experience and I've even qualified for F1 Esport in 2020. And today I will tell you everything you need to know to start driving faster and turning off the assist to start beating the competition. Let's go. Starting off, let's talk about the basics, cornering and racing lines. The best way to approach a corner is from the outside to the inside, which is also called hitting the apex. Make the track as wide as possible on the entry of the turn and cut to the inside to come out as wide as possible as well. This way you can carry as much speed through the corners as possible. It is important to keep the car rolling through the corners to carry more speed, allowing for a slingshot onto the straight, which you're gonna gain the most amount of time on. The rule of thumb in F123 is to always focus on the exit speed and not to focus on braking insanely late because you'll be able to carry all that extra exit speed on a super long straight, giving you more more time gain. The second tip is to not accelerate too early when coming out of the corner. Normally new drivers tend to go onto the power a little bit too early and this will actually give the car understeer and push the car out wide and then it doesn't want to turn in anymore. If you're a little bit more gradual with the acceleration through the corners you'll be able to turn the car more quickly as well. In terms of turning on the racing line assist you want to be finding vantage points for each single turn of the track in terms of where you want to break. This is one of the hardest, if not the hardest, uh, assist to disable. In general, the 100 meter board is a good breaking point for medium to hard braking zones, but you'll have to find out the specific braking zones for each of the different tracks by trying it out yourself. You can also use other vantage points than the brake marker boards, but make sure you use static vantage points as shadows will actually move <laughs> with a different time of day, so then you'll be braking way later than you're supposed to, uh, which is not what you want. I always recommend if you want to disable the racing line to turn it off and never look back. You might struggle at the start, but this is the fastest way to learn how to drive without it. Because if you go and turn it back on, you're basically resetting all the progress you've made earlier. It took me about two months back in F1 2019 to remember all my braking points consistently on each different track. They only change a tiny bit between different games, so once you learn it, you'll know it for many games to come. Next up, braking and ABS. Well, what a flip is ABS actually? Uh, ABS is the anti-lock braking system on an F1 car and it is an assist in the F1 game you can enable. The system automatically prevents you from locking up the tires, but ABS will not give you as much potential stopping power as you would have when you have the assist disabled. Now, luckily, there's plenty of techniques that you can use when you have ABS disabled to make it as easy as possible. The most well-known braking technique is called trail braking. This is the technique where you go and use it in very hard braking zones. You punch the brakes at full stopping power and then you gradually let loose of the brakes. This gives you the ultimate stopping power of the car. Punch the brakes with full stopping power when going quick and then gradually let loose of the brakes. When you go quick, you have a lot of downforce and when you go slower, you have less downforce resulting in those lockups. So obviously, when you go slower, you want to have the brake pedal less applied. For medium and low braking zones, keep the braking gradual and don't press full braking force. Uh, carrying speed through the corner is one of the most important parts of braking successfully. If you're having issues locking up, try avoiding uneven surfaces like curbs when braking as they will actually upset the car. Try using the track or try and use the track plus the AstroTurf which is actually quite even as well. In F1 23, the brake bias setting plays an important role actually. Ideally, you want a balanced setting so the front tires and the rear tires don't look up. In F1 23, 57 or 58% actually gives you the most balanced setting to avoid lockups. You can adjust the brake bias percentage up for tracks with a lot of hard braking zones, or you can adjust it a little bit down for tracks with easier braking zones. Now there's another phenomenon called engine braking. Shift down fast at first and slower on the last couple of gears to actually get help from the engine when braking. This slows you down a lot faster and makes the car more stable under braking as well. Obviously, this only applies when you're using manual gears. Now, of course, you're braking to get ready for a turn. But the rule of thumb here is don't brake while turning. Brake in a straight line when braking hard. When letting loose of your brakes, start turning more. Brake less when you start turning more is the rule of thumb here. This is very important. This is the main cause of lockups in F123. Now, elevation changes are also important for braking. Uh, elevation changes involve gravitational pull, and if you brake downwards, gravity will not slow you down, of course. If you brake upwards, that, of course, gravity will help you brake a little bit. So the braking zones are adjusted 
because of elevational changes. Now that you're a master of braking, let's head to traction and acceleration. The secret of traction control is gradually applying the throttle. Obviously, it sounds logical, but the only way to get better at traction zones is to practice. However, there's a couple of things you can do to make it easier for yourself. Let me tell you what to do. Accelerate in a straight line. If you accelerate while you are turning, the car is not as planted yet. Try to get the car straightened out as soon as you can. This will help a lot to gain traction quickly. F1 cars are more stable while they are in lower engine revs. But what, what the flip are engine revs? Uh, high engine revs is when the engine is screaming like this. And you have to shift up. Low engine revs is when the engine sounds very lazy. By shifting earlier than normally, you can create a more stable car for the traction zone, resulting in a quicker acceleration. This is called short shifting. Short shifting, however, is no longer as important on F123 as it was on previous games, as the cars are way easier to control under acceleration. So I would not recommend short shifting too heavily here. But it does help if you're experiencing some traction loss on exit zones. Now that we're no longer spinning on the exits, let's go to some ERS management. But what is the ERS then? ERS is the energy recovery system and it's basically a huge battery that gets charged while you brake and gets drained while you accelerate. You use the ERS system by pushing the overtake button. While you have the overtake button enabled, more power will be put through the tires causing you to be quicker, but also causing you to have more wheel spin and making the car way less stable. You can gain the most amount of time by using ERS while coming out of the corners under acceleration. This is because you take all that extra speed onto a straight instead of gaining a little bit of extra speed through the corners itself. In the rain though, you do not want to be using the ERS on the acceleration all too much, as the wheel spin is going to be way worse than the gains. In the rain, the best thing you can do is to use the ERS on the straights as soon as you know that you cannot get a lot of wheel spin anymore. This normally happens around 6th or 7th gear. The best way to manage the ERS is to divide the 100% battery life evenly over the amount of laps that you're gonna do in a race. So for example, you're doing a 5 lap race and you have 100% at the start, you're allowed to use about 20%, maybe a little bit less, 15%, because you don't want to be at 0% in the last and final lap. But then you know how much you can use per lap, and you'll be able to use the battery most efficiently. Now, don't forget to check out my other guides on F123, and like and subscribe if this video helped you in any way. See you on the next one. Peace.